The subscribers have spoken. This video we have the Myth School, the bane of Wizard101 Reddit, and one of the most unpopular schools in the entire game. I have fond memories back when people used to post on the Wizard101 forums looking for battles. And I wasn't sure why they didn't just use the PvP kiosk. However, what we want to know is how good was Myth actually in competitive PvP? And in this video, we will be going over these competitive formats. In the starting years of the first era of PvP, many wizards would struggle, but some would look for strategies online to learn how to play better. In midst of all this, one school rose to the top of the tier. Myth was designed to play solo which utterly destroyed the upper tier and lower tier schools. Starting at Grandmaster level, Myth gained the powerful Orthrus that allowed them to hit from two sides nullifying shields. And even if shields were used, Pierce would take away in a pinch. If that was not enough, Myth also had access to the Golem minion, which made it for a good shield breaker. Balance and Life stood some chance if they had an open shot from first, especially Balance, as they had a nasty full power judgment at maximum pips. Did I mention back then Faint was 70% to both enemy and caster? Yikes. Although Myth did not have a reliable healing spell, Seder somewhat patched that problem up. The only true counter to Myth was to double weakness it with the item card and treasure card versions of it. Weaknesses, no pun intended, was actually the only way to reliably weaken Orthrus and Minotaur, lest you would rather have a shield that would go through the first hit and not the second one. With the introduction of Celestia and Waterworks gear, Commander gear was rendered useless, unless you were level 50 or below. Starting at level 60, Myth actually had some competition now, it couldn't just blast right through like before. During this time, Myth gained a huge buff and curse at the same time in the form of Medusa. The card single-handedly caused many players to start using stun blocks, for fear of 2 round stuns leaving them at a huge disadvantage. The fire school somewhat countered Myth by having a more useful card without much drawbacks in Ifrit. A card that dealt huge damage and delivered a 90% weakness to the opponent. This isn't to say that Myth fell to the wayside, it simply had some competition with other schools now. In the second age, Myth received a windfall of tools in shadow magic, mainly Shrike, and the spell King Artorius. However, this marked the beginning of Hyper Offense. Schools that could not compete much with Myth in the first age became more prominent as the power level became somewhat equal. Fire slowly began to creep up and overtake Myth as the preferred school in damage. For one, Fire gained the useful Fire from Above, also known as FFA, which is a fire based spell that dealt massive damage and leaving 3 fire traps on the enemy. The other card that sealed the deal was Fire Beetle, lending its shield breaking capabilities and leaving 3 fire traps in the process. However, that's not to say that Myth was bad, it was simply outclassed by Fire who could do anything Myth can do but better. In the third age, many mechanics were changed involving critical to only do 25-30% to extra damage making block irrelevant. This era also introduced jewels, more specifically piercing jewels, and at max level it was possible to have 18% or more piercing. Essentially, these jewels let you cut through a specific percentage of an enemy's resist or armor to deal more damage. As a result, many players focused on hyper offense and critical. Myth at max level eventually started falling further and further down the tiers, due to many of its problems still arising. It was one of the schools that lacked a recovery move, not being able to replenish health meant it was easier to be taken out quickly. One other factor that played a big role was power creep. It essentially marked a nail in a coffin for Myth. Schools such as Balance, Ice, and Life who were once schools that Myth laughed at, soon climbed their way up from below. As it stands, Myth sits at somewhat mid-tier while not exactly being top tier or bottom of the barrel in this age. And in the fourth age, Myth still struggled with the top tier schools as power creep kept increasing at level 130. Fire with Burning Rampage, Bounds with Lore Master, Supernova, and Mana Burn, Life with Ever Present and Spammable Guardian Spirit, Ice with Abominable Weaver in addition to a massive health stat. Yeah, the list goes on guys. Myth stood literally no chance in the upper tiers. Although Myth did have shift as a means to remove damage over time, it's not saying much when other schools have that option as well in the form of a treasure card. 
This age also brought along the introduction of Scion spells, which did double the amount of damage if certain conditions were met. Although the Scion of Myth only required two stun blocks to do double damage, it also needed two turns to set up. The other versions of this spell did not have the problems such as Death and Storm Scion. The point I'm trying to drive home is, they were much easier to use. So that's it, how good was Myth actually? It had an explosive start in the first age, but later down the road, the sheer power of the other schools pushed it down. Myth simply was not able to adapt with the current metagame, and it seems likely to never do so. However, that isn't all bad. Maybe someday PvP might change to fit Myth. Let's just see what happens later down the road in the fifth age. Thanks for watching everyone, like the video if you enjoyed it, if you didn't, dislike it, if you know who I was parodying, comment down below, and if you get it right, props to you. But I'll see you in the next one, until then, take care, and peace out.